Hey everyone, Jeroen here. Today I want to talk about how to choose an orchestral sample library. There's a discussion going on on a, a group, a Facebook group that I'm a member of. It's called Sample Libraries for Contact. If you don't know this group yet, uh, do check it out and join it if you like uh, contact libraries. Uh, it's a very interesting group. So yeah, there's this uh, returning discussion or returning question uh, that I see there uh, very often uh, about orchestral libraries. So that's what I want to talk about today, about orchestral libraries. I'm going to try in this um, presentation to be as objective as possible. So I'm going to try to give you as much as possible facts and not opinions. I also want to make it clear that I'm going to talk only about full orchestral libraries. I'm not going to talk about dedicated libraries. For example, I'm not going to talk about dedicated string libraries or dedicated uh, brass libraries. I'm only going to talk about libraries that offer the full package. Um, I'm also going to be mentioning prices here and there. If I do, the prices are approximate. Prices do change all the time, so um, it's just a, yeah, an indication. Good. Um, just as an introduction, maybe uh, something I need to say about the quality, the overall quality. You hear people complaining every now and then or, or uh, you know, everybody has their opinion and it's their full right. It's everybody's right to have an opinion. Uh, and I guess I'm going to express an opinion here after all. In my opinion, the overall quality of the libraries I'm going to talk about is really good really good i come from the time where um, you know where i made music with synthesizers and uh, i still remember i could not believe my ears the first time i heard uh, an orchestral sample library and i still remember that feeling and i still feel the same way the quality is really good so i can already you know make a short conclusion and that is that you're not going to be disappointed whichever one you buy however you can make a wrong choice and that's uh, one of the main purposes of this uh, video, to avoid that you will make the wrong choice. Wrong choice not because um, because the library would be bad in some way, but because of its content. You might uh, misjudge that. So the overall quality is really good. And still, of course, logically, there are differences. What kind of differences are there between libraries? First of all, there's a difference in sound, which is logic. Every library has been recorded in a different studio, has been recorded using different mics and so on. Another important difference that you will find between libraries is what they will offer, how many round robin they have uh, in, their, in their patches, do they offer legato or not, and so on. A third uh, difference can be the mapping. So every uh, developer will choose, will make a choice in, in how they are going to map their um, their um, samples across the keyboard and they all make their own choices some will will, will will split things up between you know for example your you have your basses and your cellos and your uh, violas and, and violins uh, others will choose for example uh, Albion is one uh, is one like that where they will split up their brasses between brass low brass mid and brass high so yeah that's also a difference and uh, you might like one option more than the other so those are things that you can pay attention to then so to conclude every library for sure has its pros and cons there's no way around that that's that's really objective the job for you is going to be to see which uh, are the pros which are the cons and then weigh those up against each other and i can also conclude this slide by saying that um, the perfect library if you're curious to hear which one that is it does not exist um and i'm not trying to be nitpicking here you know uh it's just very objectively uh every library has some mistakes in there you know at the end of the sample you might hear uh, somebody talking in the distance or a mobile phone going off it does happen but it's really it's it's picking on details so yeah again i return to my comment where i said that overall quality is really good but don't expect perfection it does not exist for so many reasons and that's a discussion i'm definitely not going to start here um so yeah i conclude this slide with overall quality really good i'm going to be talking today mostly about native instruments contact player libraries sorry not really about the contact player or contact but libraries that have been developed for native instruments contact and contact player i'll explain the difference in a second another big player on the market and 
uh, I'd like to remind you, I'm talking about uh, orchestral sample libraries here. I'm not talking about anything else. So when it comes to orchestral uh, libraries, Native Instruments and East-West seem to be the biggest players on the market. I chose to go uh, with uh, Native Instruments. Uh, I will briefly talk about East-West, but I'm no expert at that, so I'm not going to go very much in detail. Um, not de definitely, it's also good stuff. So no, no, no comment, no bad comment there whatsoever. Okay, if you're going to go for native instruments, then you it's very important that you know the difference between contact and uh, the contact player. Contact is also sometimes referred to as the full version of contact. So what does that mean? What's the difference between the two? Well, first, visibly, there is no difference except for the fact that one is called contact, the other one is called the contact player. I've highlighted it, the name, you can see it at the right, sorry, at the left uh, top of the, the screen. So what is actually contact, first of all? Contact is the software that you need to be able to play your contact libraries. It's also referred to as an engine, uh, basically. Now, what is the difference between the full version of contact and the contact player? First of all, let's look at the price. The full version of contact uh, costs 399 euro. The contact player is for free. So now I can imagine that a lot of people are wondering why on earth would I buy the full version if they look the same and if the contact player is for free. Well, talking about the full version of contact, you need to know that that will support all the libraries that are developed for, uh, for contact. So that goes from the smallest free library that you can get. There's lots of freebies out there. So free contact libraries up to the biggest contact library, they are all playable in contact. The only thing you need to worry about is that you have the correct version. And uh, actually, once you buy contact, you can you get your upgrades for free. So um, if you don't have the right version, you can always upgrade uh, for free. No worries there. So what are the limitations then of the contact player? Well, the contact player will only support the bigger and more expensive libraries. Let me explain that. Be very careful here. I did not say that it will support all the big and expensive libraries. How it works is, is uh, as follows. The developers of contact libraries, if they want their library to be able to play in the free contact player, they need to pay a license fee, which costs, I can imagine, quite a lot of money. I don't know how much, doesn't really matter. Um, you can imagine that if your library runs in the contact player, that's an advantage for the users because they don't need to buy the full version of contact. So it basically, if the libraries that you like run in the contact player, you can save yourself 399 euro. So I hope that that kind of uh, explains it a little bit. So don't be surprised if you buy a small library and you only have the contact player, uh, that it will not be supported, that you won't be able to play it. Very often you will be able to play it in demo mode, which is like 15 minutes. Uh, you can play it and then uh, it stops. So that's not really what you want. Okay, so let's talk now about orchestral libraries. That's what this video is all about, after all. Um, so again, I'm going to be talking about full orchestral libraries. By full orchestral libraries, I mean libraries that contain strings, brass, woodwinds, and percussion. Those four elements are a full orchestral library. You will see that some libraries offer also a bonus on top of that, which can be a piano, a choir, uh, special effects, pads, etc. Uh, do pay attention when I talk about strings, brass, and so on. I'm talking about ensembles. Full orchestral orchestral libraries usually will not contain solo instruments, with maybe one or two exceptions. But you know, you will notice that all of them almost are focused on uh, ensembles. Okay. Um, before I dive into the contact orchestral libraries, I'm, I do want to mention something about East-West uh, Quantum Leap. Uh, they have a full orchestra in three editions. There's the silver edition, the diamond edition, and the gold edition. I've put some approximate prices here also. Uh, so you do get the full package there. I'm not really sure what the difference uh, is between them. Uh, so I, I, I would invite you to check out some videos on, uh, on YouTube. What's also interesting about uh, East-West is that they have the East-West Composer Cloud. That is a monthly subscription. So if you think that the prices here of East-West are too high for the whole bundle to buy it in once, then maybe you would be interested in the, uh, the monthly subscription. Uh, do check out what the rules are because, of course, that's um, 
yeah, you need to be very well prepared and informed uh, about that before you 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 subscribe to that uh, to that cloud. Then there's VSL, Vienna Symphonic Library. I don't know much about it. I have the impression that their quality is really good, um, but I've never really taken the time to check them out. I think mostly because the prices you see are quite high, but uh, for this video I dug in a little bit deeper, just briefly, and uh, I found that there are some cheaper, smaller editions. So first of all, uh, VSL has its own engine, so it does not run in contact. It does not. It has also nothing to do with the uh, engine of uh, East-West um, East West libraries. It has its own engine. I found a core bundle for 969 euro, which is very expensive, of course. Um, but when I dug a bit deeper, I found the special edition collection volume one, which seems to contain really a lot. It contains the essential stuff that you need uh, and it costs 285 euros. So that's actually quite interesting. Uh, do pay attention. I, I, I did not check this much further in detail. So if you want to uh, know more about VSL, uh, check out some videos, do some careful reading um, because there's really a lot that they that they offer, a lot of different bundles and, 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 and so on. So yeah, dig your way through it, I would say. Okay, and that brings me to all the contact libraries. So all the libraries I'm going to be talking about as of now are going to be contact libraries. And I want to start off with uh, Spitfire Audio. Spitfire Audio offers really a lot, uh, but when it comes to the full orchestral bundles, you will be looking at uh, the orchestral, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Albion series. There are five, uh, five Albion libraries. I've put uh, the first three here on the, on, on the slide. Um, so Albion has a full orchestra, that means the strings, the brass, the woodwinds and so on. Per bundle you will pay 459 euro currently, that is including VAT. And on top of the uh, orchestral uh, samples, they will also offer loops and pads and drones. Now there is one important remark about Albion. Um, you can make a wrong choice here. Like I said at the beginning, all the libraries are good quality and Spitfire Audio is definitely one of the, the best when it comes to quality. But that doesn't mean that you cannot make a wrong choice. What you need to know is that Albion 1, so the one that you see here on the left, that is your general orchestra. That is going to be, without a doubt, the best choice for most people and for most purposes. It contains the strings, the, 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 the brass, longs and short articulations, you know, woodwinds, percussion, everything you need. So there you cannot go wrong. Albion 2 is focused at the soft and sensitive uh, orchestral music. So if that's what you're going to make, then Albion 2 can be a good choice for you. But be aware, you are, if, you know, if you're into trader music, then Albion 2 is going to be a very, very bad choice. Again, not because of the quality, but because of what it actually contains. The same goes for Albion 3. So actually, all the Albions after Albion 1 are very specific. Let's, let's summarize it like that. Albion 1 is your general one. Everything that follows is specific. Uh, the specific thing about Albion 3, I see any, is that it's all low-end. It's dark. It's been recorded with a bit larger orchestras than normal, so a larger brass section and a larger string section. It's very low. It's very dark. So that's very cool. I really like uh, Albion 3. Um, but if you're thinking, yeah, I like dark music and I, I make maybe trailer music or dark epic music, so I'm going to go for Albion 3, wrong choice. Albion 3 is too specific and, and not, not, it doesn't offer enough content for you to make music only with this library. So you're going to have to start off with something different like Albion 1. Good. Here's a, a small screenshot of, of uh, Albion 1. Um, so again, it has the full orchestra, but on top of that, it has loops, it has pads and drones. So it offers you quite some content, so you have a lot to play with here. Not the cheapest one, but definitely a very good option, good quality, lots to offer. That brings me to Project Sam. Project Sam has it's one of the earliest one of the yeah er, early uh, players on the market. Uh, Symphobia has been around for quite some time. Uh, it came from I think about one thousand euros, and they've uh, you know they they've um, lowered their prices and now they're around four hundred ninety nine excluding VAT that is. 
Symphobia has been scaled down also, and they are also offering or- orchestral essentials. Um, orchestral essentials, like I said, is a scaled down version of Symphobia 1, but contains, like the term already says, everything that you need. First of all, if you're thinking about Symphobia, you see that there's Symphobia 1, 2, and then Symphobia 3, which is called Lumina. Here, just like with Albion, you can definitely make a wrong choice. Again, not because of the quality, but because of what is in there. Symphobia 1 is your basics, your your strings and brass and woodwinds long and short articulations, and then some extras, some, some orchestras and so on. So that's definitely the one you want to start with if Symphobia is going to be your choice. Symphobia 2 is going to be in addition to that. It's going to be um, some nice extras, but definitely not, not the one you want to start with. And then finally, Lumina is something really specific. Um, I've played with it once, it's been a while, so I don't remember in detail what it was like, but here you are not going to find your uh, long strings and short strings and long brass and uh, and short brass. You're not going to find that. It's something very specific, so check it out before you buy that one. Now, me personally, I'm a bigger fan of Orchestral Essentials, uh, first of all for the price. Uh, €299 is already quite a bit cheaper. That's also excluding VAT. Uh, I think even with VAT, it is more or less the cheapest library, the cheapest bundle on the market. And it is definitely quality-wise, it's very good. Content-wise, it has a lot to offer. So um, I have it myself also. Uh, it was the second library I ever bought after uh, Albion. Uh, I was very happy with it. Um, so, yeah, you know, if, if, if you hear people complain about it, it's, you know, here the quality... Don't have any doubts about it. Quality is really good. Um, let's take a quick look at, at what Orchestral Essentials look like. Looks like. Uh, so you have the full orchestra containing strings, brass, woodwinds, and percussion. And on top of that, you get a, a simple choir and a, that sings only us. Uh, you get some sound design um, patches and you get a, a keyboard. That keyboard contains a harpsichord and a simple piano and things like that. So you do have a lot of things to work with. Um, you know, with orchestras, orchestral essentials alone, you can make quite a bit of music uh, without needing anything else. Um, also, here you have orchestral essentials one and two, the same as same remark as with Symphobia and uh, Albion's. Start with orchestral essentials one, and then move on to two if you like uh, orchestral essentials one, because of the content. Orchestral Essentials 1 has all the essentials. Uh, version 2 has, you know, a lot of nice extras. Um, yeah. Then we have Cine Samples. Cine Samples is also known for really good quality. And um, they offer a lot of dedicated libraries, which I said I'm not going to talk about. Um, they have one bundle that has the full orchestra, and that is Cine Symphony Light. What you get here in Cine Symphony Light is... Uh, your full orchestra and that's it so you get your strings long strings short brass long brass uh, short woodwinds long and short percussion timpani and also um, uh, pizzicato strings and that's it no extras no choir no piano no special effects no pads no nothing Um, so yeah content wise it's a little bit less interesting but quality wise it's definitely a good one it's also lightweight uh, it's only two megabyte, uh, uh, megabyte, two two gigabytes in total, so definitely a good one. Uh, it sells for three ninety nine, but um, just like with many other uh, developers, there's sales about four times per year, especially interesting around Black Friday, and then you will be able to get it for probably two ninety nine euro. Then there's Kirk Hunter's Diamond Symphony Orchestra. I never heard about it until a short while ago when it was on a very special sale. Uh, it was being sold for uh, 99 euro, which was very cheap. What you need to know about Kirk Hunter is that his library has been, or his libraries, yeah, some of them, um, have been around for a really long time. He is also one of the, the first ones to make orchestral libraries. In the meantime, he did update his uh, interface a little bit. I've put a, a picture of it here. And the most um, important things to mention about uh, Kirk Hunter's Diamond Symphony Orchestra is that it has a huge content. It has uh, everything you need, actually. 
lots of detail especially lots of articulation so that means you get your your you know as you can see here um, all the different variations of long and short tremolos half trill uh, and so on you name it it's going to be in here so lots of content lots of detail but there are a few disadvantages first disadvantage is the price it's 499 euro um unless you would get it on a discount again so but yeah 499 is not really cheap so if you're looking for cheap this is not your best option um Another disadvantage is that it requires the full version of Contact. So if you don't own the full version of Contact, I doubt that it would be worth to spend another 399 euro just for this library, because then you're looking at uh, 800 euro, more or less, to be able to play this, and that would be really too much. But for the rest, quality will be very good, um, and especially if what you need are a lot of different articulations because you make very varied music, then this might be a, a good one for you to go for. Then there's orchestral uh, orchestral tools, uh, Metropolis Arc. In the meantime, you already have uh, Metropolis Arc 2 as well. Uh, I'm only going to talk about Metropolis Arc 1 here, which is going to be, again, your best choice to start with, and then you can always continue with uh, Metropolis Arc 2. Metropolis Arc has also really a lot of content. It has, first of all, the full orchestra, but on top of that, it has a really nice choir and it has a band, which um, which basically means that there's guitar in there. I think also bass guitar, there's uh, drums in there. So you get a lot of content. Also something very specific I need to mention here about Metropolis Arc. It's, it's not your most um, um, average library. Uh, Metropolis Arc is mostly meant for trailer and action. So if the kind of music that you are going to make is going to be trailer music, the big epic trailer music and action stuff, then this is the best library you can probably buy. It's not cheap, 549 euro, but it's um, I, I've heard nothing but good comments about it. It's heavy, it's dark, and it does have everything. So in con in, in um, as opposed to... Um, uh, Albion 3, Albion 3 is also big and dark, and only that. It's only the low stuff. Metropolis Arc has the low stuff, but it also has high strings and high brass and high uh, woodwinds and so on. So the whole range is covered here, but it is it has fast attacks and 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 it's yeah it's big and epic. Do check out the videos. Um, very interesting library. But if you're if you want to make all kinds of orchestral music, so also softer things, then this might not be your best choice. I don't own it, so I cannot f fully comment in detail. Um, so check out some videos. Then there's Adios Majestica. Also, this one is something specific. Also, not your uh, typical average uh, orchestral library. It does offer the full range. It it has you know the strings, the brass, the the, the woodwinds, and so on. Uh, and what's so specific about Majestica is that it is recorded with a very large 240-piece orchestra. So here again, you have more players, uh, just like in Albion, actually, more players than what is uh, common, commonly uh, used um, in an orchestra. It sounds fantastic, of course. You can imagine with so many players, um, it's going to sound fantastic. But also here... I don't think that this is your best first choice if you want to make all kinds of uh, orchestral music. Even if your music is only the big and epic thing, I don't know if this is going to be your best uh, library to go with. I think this is more something you want to add to another bundle. Price is 599 euro, also not the cheapest. And I should mention, um, I, I didn't check this, but I'm quite sure that you're going to need here the full version of Contact. That's also quite important. I think none of the ADO libraries are supported with by by, uh, by the contact player. But do double check me on that. Then there's Fresilian Studios Chamber Orchestra. It's quite cheap, 229 euro, but this is a chamber orchestra. That's quite important. A chamber orchestra is, of course, not what you're going to use to make epic music and so on. It has a very nice sound. Uh, I almost bought it once because I wanted something... Um, yeah, for some more detail, I wanted uh, solo uh, strings, and 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 I was thinking that maybe this would offer, would have what I wanted. In the end, I went for something else, but uh, definitely, Versilian Studios is a good library. Um, 
but yeah do listen to it before because of course this is not going to be for everybody it has lots of content especially for this price so definitely also there you cannot go wrong but lastly also very important to mention is that it requires the full version of contact so i've summarized here the best choices for starters in my opinion but yeah it's it, it this is actually quite objective the best choices are albion one and this is disregarding the the, the prices of course the price wise that you know your budget and and that's a choice you make but uh, definitely interesting is Albion 1, Orchestral Essentials 1, Symphobia 1, I should have mentioned the 1, and Cine Symphony Light. They have everything you need when it comes to orchestra, and all four of them are supported by the free contact player. So uh, that will save you at least th that money if, if you're not going to continue with, uh, with uh, contact after that. I should mention that there are a few other optional choices for some people. Uh, Kirk Hunter Diamond is uh, interesting if you want a lot of detail in uh, when it comes to arch articulations, if you want to have a lot of choice. Uh, but keep in mind, you need the full version of Contact. Metropolis Arc could also be a good choice for you if and only if you are into the epic uh, trailer music, the big epic stuff. And finally, Albion uh, uh, 2 Logria could be interesting for you as well. Uh, as a first library if you're only into the soft and slow orchestral music now my story is not finished yet um, if you think oh uh, that you know your choice i think you're going to have to rethink that opinion because there is another option and that is to buy native instruments complete 11 ultimate the the name already says it complete this is everything that you need and more which actually means that you know if you buy this there's lots of stuff in there that you're not going to use probably everybody has their favorites so me personally i have a complete ultimate 10 and i probably don't even use 50 percent of it although I'm, I'm starting to use more and more uh, other things that i didn't use in the past so what you have here is orchestral stuff acoustic stuff you've got synths you've got fx plugins uh, lots and lots and lots of things uh and, of course, you have the full version of Contact, which is included here. The price, it's not cheap, 1,199 euro. But if you buy this, you have everything that you need. Except for maybe one thing, and that is sound design stuff. There is not really a lot of sound. So, whooshes and, and hits. Although, yeah, you have Evolve that has, um, yeah, hmm. Yeah, but when it comes to modern sign design, it, it there's more interesting things on the market. But then again, you will have the full version of Contact. And uh, just look at some of my other videos. There are even some free sound design libraries on the market, some cheap ones. So um, that's definitely not something you should worry about. So Complete 11 is definitely an interesting choice. Talking about what it contains in terms of orchestral, um, it has the Symphony Essentials. That is brass, strings, and woodwinds. And you get even the short and, uh, sorry, the, the solo and the ensemble. So you got quite a lot there. You do have only the, um, like the term says, the essential um, articulation. So your longs and your shorts and a few other ones. Um which I think is, is going to be more than enough uh, for, for what you're going to do. So this, by the way, the, the, the Symphony Essentials was not around when, when uh, in, in Complete uh, 10 Ultimate. So I would not have advised uh, Complete 10 Ultimate uh, to, to, to people like you who are, who are looking at a, a first library to begin with. But now that it contains the Symphony Essentials, it's definitely one that you should check out. So like I mentioned, Symphony Essentials is your strings, brass, and woodwinds. But of course, Complete 11 also contains some percussion. They have Action Strikes, which is huge. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's you know, Hollywood, big epic stuff. It has Damage, which is also really amazing. Those two libraries I could not live without. And then there's also Evolve and Evolve Mutations, uh, which are also nice to have. Now, how on earth are you going to make a choice between all these beautiful, great sounding libraries? I'm going to give you some tips. I hope they will help. Um, my first tip continues on where I ended my previous chapter, and that is Native Instruments Complete 11 Ultimate. It's not going to be your cheapest choice, but it may be the best choice depending on your future plans. Because what is going to come after 
this after you know so you're going to buy your uh, first orchestral um, uh, library bundle and then you're going to want to expand of course because you'll need more and more so you'll be looking for example at acquire and um, i'm thinking now complete 11 does not have acquire either anyway you're going to look at acquire so check out already if you're going to buy already check try to plan ahead a little bit and think which choir are you going to buy and does it require the full version of contact or not and also the same thing for sound design um, because when it comes to sound design there's only one library that comes to my mind that is uh, supported by the free version of contact and that is gravity and gravity is not cheap it's really good but it's not cheap for the rest all the orchestra all the uh, sound design libraries you know with whooshes and bangs and risers and stuff um they are uh, not so expensive but not supported by the free version of contact um i should mention because i just caught myself on saying risers and downers and so on that it rise and hit is an interesting library that is included in complete uh, 11. so yeah dig in a little bit further watch some videos take a good look at what's in there definitely interesting but not cheap for the rest which are other important factors that will help you to make your choice the interface me personally th that's 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 the thing i'm i'm nitpicking i'm picky on you know i if there's an ugly interface i'm not going to buy it but that's me um of course the looks is one thing but uh, what you're definitely going to look at is what does the interface offer and do i like those options uh so you're going to look at does it have key switches does it have the controls that i want does it have an adsr filter does it have reverb you know is the library does it have reverb on the the sound already uh, can i turn that on and off and so on so that's uh, all buttons on the interface that that you want to take a look at secondly or oh, thirdly actually i'm uh, point number three already uh something that's also important is the content what does this library offer um cine symphony light for example like i said only has your strings and uh, brass and woodwinds and percussion which is the basics of what you need but then if you look at orchestral essentials you get also uh, some full orchestral patches on top of that which can create a nice atmosphere you know they've mixed it already for you um, you get keyboard and harp you get some sound design patches you get some choir patches and even some bonus instruments so yeah if if you buy that as a first library you're going to be able to play a lot more you're going to be able to add a lot more to your uh, first compositions the same goes for albion for example they also have a lot more content uh, Symphobia 1 also has more content and so on. So look at the content as well and then just here again uh, plan ahead, you know. What's your budget? What's your monthly budget? Or how much can you save? Uh, what do you plan to buy in the future? And um, yeah, depending on that future, is it interesting to buy a library that has more to offer than just the orchestrals? Or am I going to be happy to begin with just the orchestrals? And then finally, I think this is my last uh, point, um, RAM use. Uh, a nice feature about Contact and the Contact Player is that in the libraries you can see how much RAM memory the patch uses. I made the mistake with my first computer to buy a qui quite light computer. My, my first computer had uh, only 8 gigabytes of uh, RAM memory, which was enough, but uh, it's not ideal so as you can see here i've i have a picture of action strings you can see that it uh, it takes 310 megabytes of ram so with my 8 ram um, 8 gigabyte ram computer i could uh, load up about 20 contact libraries and then my memory was full so do think about it. if you still have to buy a computer don't save up on the ram don't don't save on your computer your computer is important so the RAM memory, you can see it there at the top of the library. Luckily, there is a purge function, which allows you to, um, well, if you click on the purge, if you purge the samples, that's how it's called, um, contact is only going to use those, or, or is only going to use memory for those um, uh, notes, keys, that you are playing in your composition. So all the keys that you don't touch, it's not going to use memory for that so you will save on your ram memory but still even though this is a great functionality uh it is something that i always keep in mind if i buy a library because some libraries use up 
to uh, one and a half gigabytes per uh, patch. Lastly, if you are getting closer to making a choice, inform yourself. Always inform yourself. Watch the videos because it's very important. If you buy a library, you cannot return it. Your choice is final once you, you pay the money for it. There are lots of good reviews and demos on uh, the internet, especially on YouTube. I definitely recommend uh, Daniel James and soundsandgear.com uh, for all the libraries that I've just mentioned because Daniel James and soundsandgear.com have been around uh, a bit longer already. So if you're going to look for videos of all the libraries I mentioned, you will definitely find them. And then there's also samplelibraryreview.com and the Samplecast, which are also um, uh, two guys who are making really great videos, but they haven't been around that, uh, around that long yet. Um, and I don't think they have any uh, reviews on, on, on big um, orchestral bundles. Um, but do follow these channels because they have a lot of interesting news. Uh, you know, every time there, when there's a new library coming out somewhere, they will review it. So definitely interesting to follow them. Thank you very much for watching. Um, also keep an eye on my channel, of course, because I, I don't post a lot of videos, but when I do, I, you know, I, I, I mention some, some free, um, contact libraries here and there. Um, so maybe there will be something interesting there for you. Sorry for taking up so much of your time. I hope it was interesting. And uh, until the next time. Bye-bye.